I'm going to show you how to finally understand and master JSON inside NAN, the one skill that stops 90% of users from building powerful automations that actually work. So I've personally built over 150 custom automations and mastering JSON was the single biggest factor that took me from trial and error to consistent projects. And what took me months is going to take you just 20 minutes to understand. So in this video, I'll break down JSON into simple bite-sized concepts that anyone can understand. You'll learn exactly how to read JSON data, understand different data types and extract the values you need. So let's jump straight into it. And as a side note, if you're looking for more exclusive content, then check out the link to my community in the description below. So you're going to go straight to nan.io forward slash workflows, which is where NAN publish all of their free and paid templates. And you can see they've got 3,043 workflow templates, and this is increasing by the day. And I found some really great beginner resources all by one person, which I'm going to show you in a second. So first we'll go through the learn JSON basics. So all you need to do is type in learn JSON basics here, and it's going to come up with one result. And Lucas Perrin, I hope I'm saying that name correctly, has created a series of beginner workflows. He offers coaching, et cetera, as well. And we're going to run through a few of those and master some of these concepts today. Let's start with the learn JSON basics. So if you click on the workflow itself, it's going to open it up in a separate window. You can effectively see what the workflow looks like, read some information about how it works, but a quick cheat sheet on how to grab this, you can actually just copy and paste. Once you click explore, copy and paste directly from here, open up your own workflow environment. And all you're going to do is just copy and paste that in, click on there, and it's going to paste that directly in here. So the concepts that I found most difficult when I was starting out to master were all around what's closest to actual coding. So the heart of NAN is the fact that it's a drag and drop software with very low code slash no code. But some of the terminology around JSONs and the code and JavaScript and things like that, actually the principles come from coding. And if you understand those principles, you can effectively tackle most issues inside NAN. And the heart of that starts with actually JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And this tutorial, the first tutorial, walks through exactly those different points. So we will walk through an example of the tutorial and explain every bit by bit. So it starts with what the is JSON. And this workflow will teach you the basics of JSON, the language, the apps, and NAN nodes. That's really important used to exchange information. We use JSON because it's very internet friendly, but it's also a really compact way to store data. So imagine a contact card. We've got John Doe, age 30. He has children and he's got a phone number. So we've got different things in here. We've got a name, we've got a number, we've got a Boolean or a yes or no. So actually a Boolean is true or false, and we'll cover that in a moment. And we've also got a number which is in this construct, which has the square brackets and multiple strings inside that because it's actually a list here of two phone numbers. So JSON is just a way of writing this down so the computer can understand it perfectly, but also understand the data types. So we're going to follow the instructions here and execute the workflow. And then what we'll do is we'll go through each part of the JSON data so that you can see exactly how that is. So when we start the tutorial, we've got a blank JSON data in here. And inside NAM, we've got the schema, the table, and the JSON, and we'll go through each of those. But if we move into the first note here, we've got the keys and values. So it's important to understand that everything in JSON language is built around this key and value pair. So we effectively have a key, which is the name of the data itself, and it's always in double quotes, and then a value, which isn't always in double quotes, and we'll show you what formats aren't in double quotes in a minute. But we've got the key and value inside here. So if we switch to JSON data on the output, you can effectively see that the JSON starts with these curly braces. And if I just zoom in a little bit, in the fields that we've set in this edit fields node, we've got a key with a value. And if we remove those, we've got the name and the value. So the name is just effectively the name of whatever data field we're labeling it. And then the value is the actual value. So this is just a key value pair. And you can see that it appears like that in the data type. And then if we switch to table, it effectively represents columns and rows within that table. So we've also got a second key value pair, which is another key and another value. And you can see that that is distinguished by the comma after the first key value pair. We've then got another key value pair there. And that just distinguishes their completely different points of data, but within the same object. So the object is 
represented by this JSON object, which is the curly braces. And you can see this is a really easy example to understand because all we've got to do is click execute workflow and we can work through each of these. So let's talk about the data types. So the different data types that you're mainly going to deal with, firstly, are string. So string is simply text and text is always enclosed in double quotes. So if we have a look inside the node here, we've got an example, which is the key is our JSON underscore example underscore string. And this doesn't need to be underscore underscore. It could be JSON example string exactly like that. And then all we've put is a sentence in here. This is a simple string in JSON. It's always enclosed in double quotes. And actually you can see that that is a key value pair with the key there and the value is a string, which is just text in this case. And all we're doing by putting it in double quotation marks is telling the computer that's receiving it that it is a string and it's therefore text. So then we move on to data type of number. So now that you understand always everything in double quotation marks is a string, everything outside of that is not a string. So it can be a whole number like 10 or a decimal like a float, like 12.5. And if you want to write a number in there, say our age, we'd effectively write age of 30 with no double quotation marks. And then that would appear correct. Whereas like we said, the strings always have double quotation marks. So you can see in the examples here, we've got the JSON example integer of 10 and we've given it the data type in here. So NAN makes it really simple for us to actually just give it that data type. If I put string inside here and we reran this, you'd see it appear in double quotation marks. So let's go back to number, let's run it as number. And NAN has done all the handling for us, but it's important that you understand that you can manipulate numbers in a certain way, like adding them and subtracting. You can't do the same with strings. So if you pass it through as the wrong data type, i.e. a string, it's going to be hard to manipulate it later on. And you can see in our JSON format, again, we've got the numbers here and they've appeared in green. So they actually visually appear different to the strings. And if I run it as a string, it will appear in blue. And we can see again in the table, we've got the numbers that appear there. And if we run it through as a string again, you'll see that that is slightly different when it uh, runs through. In fact, in the table view, it appears exactly the same because the table view doesn't show us the data type. But in the schema view, we can see that actually the schema effectively shows the data types for one example. And you can see this A represents that it's a string now, whereas the number represents this is a number. And in JSON, we can actually see the distinguishment between number and string now with the quotation marks. So the next data type that's really crucial you see so often is a true or false, or this is what's called a Boolean. And this is always written as lowercase, so true or false. And you can think of it like a light switch. So it's either on, which is true or off. And it's super useful for actually saying, if this happens, then we take this action. If this does not happen, or if it's false, then we take another action. So this is how our if blocks work. We effectively say, if this condition is true, then we or this condition is equal to this, then we take a certain action, which is our true branch and our false branch there. But actually we can do this inside the data types themselves. Data types can be Booleans or true and false. And you see this expressed as a tick box inside there. And if, again, if we run this, what we're going to see is that it appears as a different data type, which is a green true. Whereas if again, we ran this as a string, we would uh, see the quotation marks around this. True or false is as simple as that, but we use it later on to actually decide how to take actions on certain things. And although this initial example has children, yes, is not a true or false, we could effectively turn that into a true or false. Yes, no, instead of strings could be true or false because it's just got two conditions. Is it true? Yes. Is it false? No. And then something that you'll see quite a lot when you've got large data sets, but missing items is actually there's a data type specifically for null. And it's always written lowercase and without quotes. So it's different from zero or blank, which is actually an empty string. Null is the intentional absence of a value. So when something is completely missing, we can effectively give it that null data type. And when this comes through, you'll often be working with a large data set and you will see a red uh, null come through or an empty object here. And this is different from undefined, which we'll cover later. But effectively here, we're seeing that it's passed through as an empty object or intentionally null. So we can actually assign it that null data type in there. Next, we have an array. So an array is effectively a list. And we saw that the phone number was a list of two mobile numbers. And an array always starts with these square brackets and ends with the square brackets. And items are separated by commas. And they look like strings inside usually, but actually they can be anything. They can be numbers, they can be booleans, but an array is effectively multiple data types in one single construct. 
And that's because actually in this JSON example array, if I run this, we're assigning multiple values to one single key. So if we remember that we have a key up here, which is our, uh, what an N calls a name, and we're assigning multiple values to that. So what we're doing is assigning a list. We're putting them in these square brackets and giving it this array format. You'll often be dealing with array when you've got complex data structures. And inside the JSON object, which is denoted by the curly braces, you can see that we've got our key here, JSON example array, and then the array denoted by multiple objects of different data types, a number, a Boolean, a null, and a string inside that object. And if you remember, we have the data type of multiple phone numbers earlier on. This would be denoted by two strings inside an array there. So we'll now show you an object within an object. So we've come full circle here, but this is where effectively you've got a nested data structure. So if we go back to our example inside here, we effectively had an array within an object. You can also have an object within an object, so a JSON object. So if we go into the example, it makes it much clearer in how it's visually displayed. We have our key and our value pairs, like array and one, two, three. But then we can also have a sub object, which is denoted by the curly braces and sub key and sub value here, which is sub key and find me. And uh, any end breaks this down really simply for us by most of the time you'll be receiving in data from your software system. So you won't actually be writing these out manually, but any ends able to tell by the way that it's ingesting the data, what data types they are. And that determines how you actually manipulate the data, which is the really important thing you understand here. So in this schema view, we're able to see the nested data types. So everything's denoted by a dropdown. So the larger JSON object has an array, which has multiple objects in or not objects, sorry, multiple key value pairs in. And then we have the sub object with the sub key down there. And then anything that's on its own is just listed as a key value pair, which is a Boolean and false, for example. And in the JSON, you can see that that's denoted by the curly braces as an object in there. So now we're going to show you how to actually use that data dynamically. So we're going to use that object as an example. And we're going to go into the next one, which is using JSON expressions. And actually, what we can do is just run a few examples through of how we would use this data dynamically inside NAN. And the first example we're going to do is basically retrieve data from a previous node. So on the left-hand side, we can see all of our inputs. On the right-hand side, our outputs. And I've got specific tutorials that cover exactly how to manipulate JSON data that go into way more detail than this. They're available in the school community description, but we'll cover the basics now, which is actually if we wanted to retrieve a number from a previous step, we effectively can pull that data dynamically. So we want to get rid of all this and make sure that we're on the expression inside here, or a shortcut to do that is just to hit equals and you see it will put the equals box here. And all we're gonna do is try and pull the equals from a previous object. So on the schema view, we can see all the previous nodes that we've looked through, object, array, Boolean, and number. If we open up the number, which is actually this set node all the way back here, we can pull the data from that dynamically. So what we're going to do is just drag and drop that directly over here. So we'll go down to the number node. And all we're going to do is just grab the number or we'll grab the float from there and actually turn that into a string on the output. Or actually, let's just keep it as a number and let's just execute that step and it will appear as a number again. So we've pulled that number from a previous step. But what you can see, which is the important part is happening, is we are digging into the object. So we are effectively denoting by this notation that we're going to retrieve from the number node, what we call number. And every time we retrieve something from there, we're effectively saying pull the item. So we're going to put dot item, dot JSON. And then inside that, we're just going to name the actual key that we want to pull. So in this example, it's JSON example flow. So if we were to write this again for the Boolean, we would effectively put, and if we open up those curly braces, it's always, the dynamic data is always written with double curly braces. If we go down to the bottom, we can effectively see, start to see the different nodes, earlier nodes, you see up here, earlier nodes, and where we're pulling the data from. So we will go to the Boolean, we will hit tab to make sure that goes in. And then if we hit dot, it will suggest our path. So dot item, dot JSON, and now we've accessed the object, which is this Boolean nodes object. If we hit dot again, we're effectively going into that object and pulling this example. So JSON example Boolean, and you'll see that appears as true. If we get rid of the number there, you'll see this appears as true there. And that's the exact value pulled. Now to dig deeper 
into an object, like a sub-object, we just need to, again, use the full stop notation. So let's say we're pulling the sub-object. Let's just call this sub-object. We've got the equals again. Let's call it a string. And what we're effectively going to do is open up those curly braces again. We're going to do exactly the same, which is call on the previous node, which was called object. And we're going to dig into it, dot item, dot JSON, always dot item, dot JSON, unless you're accessing the last object. And then inside that, we've got JSON example object, which is our master object here. So we know we're digging into that master object. And then inside that, we can go into our sub object, which we can see, and it breaks it down as a sub object. And then inside that, we can say sub key. And there we go. We've got the find me down there, which is our second example down here. The only other notation that you need to know is when you're trying to access values in an array. So values inside an array, because their lists are accessed in slightly different ways. So again, we'll open up that notation. We will go down to the earlier nodes and do the object dot item dot JSON dot JSON example object. So now we're in this master object and now we're going to go into the array. So inside the array, we have a choice here. If we hit dot, you'll see there are no suggested values. And that's because inside the array, there are no key value pairs. If we go back to the JSON and how the array is displayed, there's no keys and values like this, like this sub object. It's now just a list of values. So what we can do is effectively pull the whole array, which will appear as an array one, two, three. Or if we wanted to access a certain item, like number three, then we can give it an index value and use the square bracket notation and you see if I open up the square brackets, it will suggest to me 0, 1, or 2. And that's because indexes start at 0. Index 0 will pull out 1 value. Index 1 will pull out 2 value. Index 2 will pull out 3 value. It's a little bit confusing at first, but just know that it always starts at 0. So we hit 0, and it's returned our first or zeroth value, which is 1. So that wraps up JSON expressions, JSON types, JSON manipulation. Like I said, if you want to dig, to the, dig into this in more detail, I've got more in this school community below. But this is a really fundamental concept to understand when you start working inside NAN. Thank you so much for watching. That wraps up JSON data manipulation. If you're looking for more resources on data transformation and how to interact with that data, then check out the link in the description below for the school community.